I know I might have given him some flack in my previous videos, but if I was supposed to do a top 5 favorite characters in Diamond is Unbreakable, Okuyasu Nijimura can easily make that top 5. I've always thought of his character as such an odd and cheery character, but I can't recall to a time where I disliked him. Even in areas where people have been vocal with their dislike of him, I look to those areas and can't relate. For example, Okuyasu vs Red Hot Chili Pepper. Everyone, and even me, had spoke about his use of the hand and were questioning why won't he just scrape the stand user or the stand instead of kicking at him. Though, for me, that's just more on me wanting Okuyasu pulling an act that honestly just wouldn't be Okuyasu. Him kicking at Red Hot Chili Pepper was helping him by giving a physical output of his anguish on Chili Pepper. He had lost his brother to him, someone who he loved dearly, and he needed a way to get that pain out. It obviously wouldn't work on just anyone, since everyone in JoJo doesn't just go ahead and generalize their personal problems on anyone they come across. He can only be quenched by hurting Akira, but he wanted to make sure to hurt him as bad as how Akira had hurt him by killing Keicho. Though, if we're to compare emotional pain to physical pain, he's still not resolved. The death of Keicho was such a monumental loss to Okuyasu, but the thing was that this man was able to put on a smile for the rest of the part and make so many of us laugh and enjoy him. Though I think that's why him and Josuke have such great synergy. Both Josuke and Okuyasu had suffered a loss early on in the part and they're both just able to connect well and share the best of moments with each other and Koichi included. Though I think duos are what Gemi and Jojo, the ability to bounce dialogue back and forth from each other and being able to follow up on what the other does is such an art to me. It works that way in D.I.U. when Koichi isn't present, but I don't believe that D.I.U. could have just been a duo part. Okuyasu and Josuke are great, but Koichi helps with the dynamic of the team. I'm not sure as to why, I just can't see the two without Koichi, but I think it lays in the color theory in my head, since you have their trio representing the cooler area of the color circle. With Koichi as green, Okuyasu as blue, and Josuke as purple. They just work so well with each other, and I think I might have a bit of a hypothesis as to why. Okuyasu was a younger brother that was always following behind his brother without any question whatsoever. Koichi's character loves to get to know others and tag along more than actually lead himself. The time where you would see the power of a leader is when he's guiding himself into a winning situation. Josuke is a Joestar which gives him this natural born leadership, but it's done through showcasing better options and ideas crafted outside of the box to the group. The power of Crazy Diamond influences that a lot. So when you piece all of that, what do we have? You have Okuyasu and Koichi as seconds and Josuke as number one. It's also because he's the protagonist, but Jojo isn't something like that to where everything falls in line where the protagonist is the leader of the group or duo. The trio in D.I.U. isn't even a group to where Josuke is a definitive leader. They all hang around as friends with equal positions, and it's just that Josuke takes initiative the best. And if we're being real, if they were to actually have a whole leader leader of the group in D.I.U., it's definitely Jotaro, and he's more of a father to the group if anything. I believe that the kind of group they have contributes so well into Okuyasu's character development because he's no longer continuously following behind his brother. It was never a complete bad thing that he did so, it's just that as a big brother I'm sure that Keicho would want Okuyasu to go on and live his own life and define himself as a person. Even with the statements backing that up, it's possible that I'm just projecting because I'm a big brother to many brothers and sisters. But I can understand as to why Okuyasu would follow Keicho so strongly. If you remember the childhood of the two, it was terrible. After the death of their mom, their only highlight was that their father was making more money. And even that was bad because it was obtained through the means of Dio. It was a continuous spiral down and the only thing Okuyasu could see in all of that was the back of his brother since his brother would just be up front and protecting him at all times. But even that had went bad because of the abuse and terrible conditions Keicho and Okuyasu lived in and this made Keicho, this child, forced to live a life that wasn't his. He even stated that his life would finally be able to start as soon as he finds a stand that can give his dad a peaceful end. Coming to think of it, the Nijimura arc is the saddest arc we get for Okuyasu or even the part in general, especially since his character gets happier with life as the part goes on, so that would only make this the saddest one. Recalling back to after the fight between Keicho and Josuke, Okuyasu has been listening in on Keicho's retelling of his life story with Okuyasu. 
Then it gets to the scene where Josuke repairs the chest and picture that their father had been rumbling around in for the past 10 years. It chilled me to the heart that he would piece up the photo and just cry after failing the process for 10 whole years. Josuke repairs the photo and you see his father bawling looking at the photo knowing that he misses all of it and he wants to go back to where life was nothing like it was after the death of the mom. Trying to fix a photo of your past for the past 10 years and this whole time Okuyasu and Keicho had been deeply saddened at the thought of their father not remembering them. Okuyasu had taken in all this information and it gave him hope that their father still had a chance at possibly being normal again but there was no way Keicho was going to feel the same. Especially since what Keicho had already done just to find someone to put his dad's life out of its misery. The thing is Keicho had a chance at a better life still. It just seems that way to him because of what he did overwhelms him all the time and morally correct like yes he probably had deserved to die but if we're being as real as possible he has a huge chance at life because Hazmat is just walking around perfectly fine. It's ridiculous but Keicho says that he can't turn back and along with that he threatens Okuyasu's life. Fast track to Red Hot Chili Pepper and Keicho saves Okuyasu but then his last words to his brother was that he was a hindrance. As Okuyasu, I wouldn't even know how to process what had happened. That emotional and mental trauma is like getting beat down by the mental projection of Muhammad Ali. On one hand, his brother has been defending him his whole life and wanted the best for him in the future. On the other hand, Keicho had attacked him and nearly almost made his brother blind. On the other hand, it's also because Keicho had to take on the role of a damaged leader so early on into his life which had made him into this person we had seen until the end. And on the other hand, his final words to come out of his mouth was an insult, but then on the other hand, he had sacrificed himself for his brother anyways. I just don't know what gives. His life was filled with 13 years of terrible, yet... He was able to come out at the end of it smiling nearly every day. It's beautiful and sad and amazing but tragic. He's just so happy. Then his final defining moments being his comeback in Crazy Diamond is Unbreakable where he meets up with his brother again. Okuyasu was in the darkness but then light and that light was Keicho. Light symbolizing the guidance that Keicho has been to Okuyasu and also probably death keeping him through life and getting him on his way. He felt like he could always count on his big brother and he's able to rest easy because he knows that his big brother makes the right choices. In this interaction between Okuyasu and Keicho, I believe that it was actually Keicho speaking to him, telling him that he needs to make his own choices and follow his own paths. He didn't have the best words when dying but I'm guessing that I love you was way too easy and out of Keicho's character. It's obvious by now that Keicho loves his brother. He might have terrible ways of doing it and might have messed up a lot because of what he went through but it's always been apparent to himself and probably Okuyasu. But this was the final moment between the two and I'm guessing that this is where Okuyasu finally comes to terms with himself and he starts picking on guiding himself from now on. Waking up, feeling alone because it's a new feeling to him. It's not strong independence but more of a slight realization that it has to be him that guides himself from now on and he can't keep thinking about his brother and what he would do for these situations. While Okayasu had defining moments before this one, notice that he would be a lot more abrasive when it came to situations with high stakes. In his last fight, he looks more composed than ever. He completely destroys Kira's win condition against Josuke and it's done comically, just fidgeting around with Stray Cat in his hands. <laughs> Him doing that almost made me forget about how major this battle was just because of how easy he had done with something that had been taking Josuke down for chapter after chapter. I love it. Diamond is Unbreakable has always been a part that I can just go back to and enjoy casually because it had so many likable characters and Okuyasu was just one that I just couldn't get tired of seeing. I feel like we saw a lot less of him when getting further out into the volumes but it's probably biased that I just wanted to see more of him. Also unrelated to this, I love how Araki had done his facial expressions and how they were adapted into the anime. I also love the voice actor they have for Okuyasu and I feel like the vocal tone and that kind of raspy aspect fits so well for his character. 
and this is off the script, but I think I want to say that I really do love the dynamic between Keicho and Okiyasu because I would definitely want my siblings being led into the best way possible, but on their own. There's only so many things that you can do as an older brother, older sister, and all that, but you kind of want to make sure that your siblings are ready to go out into the world and take care of themselves. It's it's a beautiful feeling. That's what how that's how I felt just when looking all over this. I've got all I wanted to talk about out for now. Well, at least for Okiyasu. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed and you want to keep up with my uploads, you can subscribe and like the video and also those subscribe. Check the bell for notification. I was recently hit up about that and some people that don't really get the videos and their subscription feed, so they definitely just like like oh, okay, let me need to fix that. And I was like, yeah, okay. So everyone just uh, mark the bell you'll be able to get notifications and you can watch the video anytime just making sure that you guys have it also if you guys do see content of other franchises on my channel <laughs> i'm not running out of ideas i don't i don't know why some got the idea that i just can't live without ventorail like i'm going to die i have so many videos idea uh, video ideas for jojo already to the point of where i can't I, I don't even know how to balance on when to do it it's just that I like more things than just JoJo, and I just kind of love making videos even more. That's my thing. Uh, you guys can also follow my media in the description, of course. That's where I kind of talked about this. And also some of the franchises that I love, uh, including my Twitch where... Well, you guys can find what I do on my Twitch on my second channel. Recently put a stream highlight up there. It's pretty funny. Uh, I have a lot of stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just a lot of plugging at the end of it all. But thank you guys again. Hopefully you guys all guide yourself and you guys live the best of lives. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. So, until then, peace out and Godspeed.